Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Foundations Church. What an amazing day out there today, huh? And you guys are here. It's me. You know we stream too. But anyway, I'm glad you're here. It's more dynamic in person. Trust me, all right? But I'm really glad you're here. Welcome to Foundations Church. We're delighted that you're with us this weekend. So many opportunities to be places, and you chose to be here for an hour or so. We're delighted, happy about that. We hope you find this time very enjoyable, fulfilling, and encouraging. My prayer all the time is that everybody leaves here, no matter what situation you're in, you leave here with some hope in your life. You know, all, we all need hope. We're in a series. We're in a series. Where it's called Starting Blocks. And here's the thesis of the, uh, of, of the series, is that everybody's faith started somewhere, somewhere. Most of it was probably handed down. Mom told me, this is what you believe. And I said, okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm raising my kids that way. I don't give my kids a book on comparative religions. They pick one. I say, here, here's what you're believing. Eventually, though, they're going to get older. And life is going to bump up against what they were taught at home. And they're going to start questioning things. Some people who are raised in faith don't question. Don't raise, no, I don't want to see that. Don't expose that to me. And they keep their lives very narrow because the real world will challenge some of the things in their faith. And they don't want to deal with that dissonance. And so they say, stop, stop. Other people say, no, I want to live in the real world. I want to live in the real world. And so they live in the real world. And the real world raises some hard questions. Don't you find that to be true? It's like, Wow. I don't know how to square that, really, with what I believe. Wow. And sometimes when we get older, a lot of people, it's just not an intentional thing. It's just what happens. We got life. We got kids. We got a job. We got to maintain friendships. We don't think about theology that much. And so some people just kind of drift away from their face of their childhood. And so we're asking the question, this, this whole series is, is, is there a starting place for adults to have faith? Can, can adults have a start? Can, can they start all over with everything? Because some stuff we had as a kid didn't work. Can, can, we, can we start all over as an adult? And so we've been investigating that, trying to ask hard questions, trying to keep it real, and, and say, how, how can it do? So, so we're in week seven, and, 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 and with this whole thing is, is the, does faith have a starting point? And so I thought week seven, we're going to talk about faith. We haven't talked about it. Now, the word faith and believe in the Bible are the same things, okay? Same things. So we're going to use the words interchangeably today. Are you all with me on that? Because the same thing in the Bible, faith and belief is the same thing. And we're going to go like we have been almost all series. We're going to take these words and we're going to go way back to the beginning of time. Because faith and belief aren't religious words. They're words that existed far before religion existed. But religion has taken them and put them into their system. So we're going to talk about what faith and belief mean even before there's any spirituality. And then at the end of the message, I'm going to tie it into spirituality. Are you all with me? Okay. So this is a bad message today. Okay. It's a bad message because the first part, we're just going to talk about faith and belief apart from any spiritual context. Okay. And so just because we're in church at the end, I just want to tie it up and we'll put some religious stuff on it and you'll say, wow, I went to church today. Okay. But this is a bad message. Okay. It'll bother some of you today, but that's okay. I'm not here to bother you. I just want us to think about faith and belief, okay? So that's just a word of warning. That's a good one, isn't it? Ooh, I came to a bad message today. Welcome, all right? I want you all to stand. I invite you all to stand. <laughs> Last week, we talked about how can you bargain with God, and the answer was unequivocally no. You can't bargain with God. God, if I get this job, I'll do it. You can't bargain with God because what we discovered last week is no, with no disrespect, nobody here has anything that God wants. He's not going to bargain with you. He's God. He's got everything. So you can say, here, I'll give you this. It's like, keep that. I don't need it. You can't bargain. God's not interested in bargaining with us because God has something better. He wants to initiate something, and we called it last week grace. Don't give me anything. I want to give you something. I'm God. I want to give it to you free of charge. And we called it last week this powerful, powerful word called grace. And so here's how we start today, okay? We're going to start with what we did, that, that, we'll jump off from where we started last week. And we'll put Ephesians 2 up, and it goes like this. You read the yellow part. For by grace you have been saved through? Faith. That word could also be? Faith. Belief. Through faith or belief. And this is not yourselves. It's not yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works. So that no one here, you know who the ugliest people on the planet are? Uh, people who boast. Don't go there, sir. All right, you're in church today, okay? All right? Germans, he's a German, that's why, okay? Um, yeah, um, people who boast. You know why? 
because we've talked about this all the time, everything you have, every gift, even your ability to make money is a gift to you from God. Everything. And when we start taking credit for stuff that we didn't do, it gets kind of ugly. So God says it's a gift. So today we're going to talk about the gift, but we're going to talk about, the, the, more importantly, how we get that gift through belief. I'm really glad you're here this morning. Welcome. For anything good to happen today, we have to ask God to be with us. Okay? So let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, on a beautiful day, in one of the most beautiful places, not only in the country, but in America, I mean, not only in America, but in the world, we recognize that God is good all the time. <laughs> and all the time, God is good. We lose sight of that. We get wrapped up in our circumstances. We think our drama is so important. <laughs> We think our life is the only thing that matters, and so we sometimes can get so busy and wrapped up into relationships and family and difficulties, challenges and betrayals and the sting of living on this planet that we can sometimes forget that you are good all the time. And all the time, you are good. So this morning, just help us re be remindful of that. Cultivate in every one of us today a spirit of gratitude. Because even the one in this room who was at the worst off is a very, very, very blessed person. Help us to be people who are appreciative of what we have. Help us be people who cultivate an attitude of gratitude. And help us be people who are optimistic even though we face a very unknown future, we could be optimistic because you are sitting on the throne. You are all-powerful. And because you are all-powerful, when we put our belief in you, everything is going to be all right. So help us to have that kind of belief. Encourage us this morning. You tell us you can meet all of our needs. Wow, there's a lot of needs in this room. Do your work among your people this morning. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And before you grab a seat, tell the person next to you, this is going to be a bad message. Just tell them that, okay? Just tell them. <laughs> All right. You're going to be bothered today because this is a bad message. But we'll, we'll, you'll get through it. You'll get through it, okay? We're going to jump right in. So if you're ready to go, say, I'm ready. We're going to talk about this word faith, and here's what I want you to know right off the bat. Faith is perhaps the most confused, misused, and abused concept in religion. People just don't understand it. They think it's some like hocus pocus kind of power. Oh, if you're, if you're doing stuff and, and good things aren't happening, some people will tell you, you don't have enough faith. You need more faith. People will tell you, if, if, if your prayers aren't being answered, people will say, oh, the reason why your prayers aren't being answered is because you got sin in your life, which if that was the case, God would never answer any prayer ever, <laughs> ever. And then I don't know if you, ever get, if you ever can't fall asleep and you turn on late night TV and that spiritual station, and those guys, they get real weird about faith. They say, you need this, and they screw up their face, and I think they're like they're constipated. You know, you need... <laughs> You need faith. It's like, well, go to the washroom, dude, okay? Restroom, you got some problems, okay? Because they're trying to make us feel guilty about this concept of faith. And so it's misused and it's abused and, it's, and it's just, it just gets real mystical. So what, what we want to do is we want to go way back before church existed. We want to go way back before the Bible existed. We want to go way back and just take these words. These aren't faith and belief aren't religious words. They were just words that were brought in, okay? So this morning, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just give, give you three observations about the word faith and belief outside of the spiritual perspective, okay? We're not talking about spiritual perspective. We will at the end, but we're going to go way beyond, okay? We're not going to talk about church stuff today. At the end, we will, but... but don't worry, because this is a bad message. Okay, all right? Observation number one, I want you to get this. The power, the ability to believe is the most powerful force at mankind's disposal. I'm not talking about religious stuff. I'm talking about the ability to believe. 
When people believe stuff, it's unbelievable what can happen. It's just, it's just amazing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ability a human being has that distinguishes us from every other being on the planet. I've had dogs. My dogs never sit around wondering if they could have a, have a vision for their future. My, vision is, my, my, my dogs don't lay around and think about what could be and should be. But humans do. Humans do. They have this amazing power to believe stuff and say, hey, this isn't right. This is what could be, and this is what should be. And if you believe stuff, you can literally, like Jesus said, you could move mountains. You, we've seen mountains moved in our day because of people's belief. When I was a kid, I was just a little kid. I'm old. Some of you don't remember this, but there was this president in our country called President John F. And he got on front of TV and said this. He said, in the next decade, in the next decade, this country is going to put a man on and bring him back safely. He said that. He says, in 10 years, we didn't have the technology back then to do it. He was just like throwing a dart in the dark. Just, it's amazing. It's amazing. He goes, in the next 10 years, we'll put a man on a moon. We believe that. We believe we're going to do it. And all of a sudden, these engineers, and said, they got together. And in less than 10 years, I was there. I mean, I wasn't on the moon, but I saw John. I saw Neil Armstrong. Take the first step on the moon. The power to believe is incredible. When I was a kid, I used to miss a lot of days of school. So did all my peers. If you're old like me, we had these little dots all over our bodies. What were they called? Measles. Chicken pox, something. Well, yeah, mumps. The whole thing. They're all gone. They're, they're eradicated. If you would have told me when I had the nine-day measles, some of your kids, I don't know, no, my kid's getting this. If I have to suffer, he's going to too. But scientists, they found a way to, to cure it. It's not around. And if it does pop up in the world, they can eradicate it real quickly. It's unbelievable. All of us benefit from when some rabble-rousers came across the ocean and they were working hard to make a living and they were taking their money and had to be shipped back to England. They go, ah, I don't like that. No way. No way. We have a right to make money. And my rights to make money and to prosper should not be tied to the family I'm born in. If I'm not from royal blood, I can still be rich and wealthy. And so they took this, they got together and they had a conference, and then they wrote these words. We believe these truths to be self-evident. That mankind is born with, with, with endowed by their creator with unalienable rights, which include the rights to. Oh, you guys don't even know this stuff. You take some history. It's really good. You'll understand it. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those were incendiary words when England saw. But you know what? When you believe it, this country is founded on ideas and belief. Y'all with me? powerful what you believe. Be careful what you believe. That was the 1700s. And in the 1800s, our country was divided. You know what? Over ideas, over what people believed, the economy and slavery and states' rights. And someone says, you can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. I'm in my state. Well, I'm in this state. Well, you can't do Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Well, I'm going to do this. Well, I'm going to do this. Well, I'm going to get a gun. Well, I'm going to get a gun. And our country went to war. 800,000 People died. Isn't that staggering? Over what? Over ideas. Powerful. Powerful. I'm trying to read a little bit about World War II. I don't know much about it, but I do know this. There was this German guy. He had a little mustache. What was his name? Adolf Hitler. I mean, Adolf Hitler took the whole world into war. And the only ability that Adolf Hitler had was the ability to speak words. That's all. That's all. He just spoke words, ideas, told the Germans, here's what could be. Here's what should be. And they says, yes, we agree. And plummeted the whole world into war over what? Over ideas. It's unbelievable. The power to believe is unbelievable. Next slide says this. Ideologies and belief systems drive world events. Just drive them. 
They drive, that's what drives the world. Good ideas, bad What you believe in can drive. It separates families. It separates, it, it separates countries. It's amazing the power to believe. It's the single most powerful ability a human being has. Animals don't have it. I got this down. When we believe, when we believe something is possible, we look for a way until we find a way. Are you all with me? We look for a way. I'm coaching my, I help him coach my son's baseball team. It's amazing. It's amazing that when you're coaching somebody, what the power of words can do. The power of words. I got this kid on my team. He never has played baseball before, and I was pitching him, and he missed a bunch of them, and he goes, I stink at hitting. I go, dude, you got a good swing. Let me adjust something here. Put your hands back, because I'm a, I know how to coach real well baseball. I, I should be playing for the Rockies. But anyway, um, I, I got him, and I got him, and all of a sudden I threw some in, and he was he hit like three in a row. He looked at me and said, I'm getting good at this. The power of words. Do you understand? When you make people see something, they'll, they'll find a way. They'll, they'll find a way. I was in the business world for a long, for a while, for about a decade, and I used to sell. Sell stuff. Selling's hard. But here's what I found out about people who sell. Optimists always outsell their less optimistic peers, even when they're smarter. I would meet some of these guys who were on my team, and they went to big colleges. Where'd you go? I was like, wow, I'd be intimidated. I went to Valparaiso University. Did you ever hear of it? No, you haven't heard of it, okay? I got accepted on probation. That's not funny. That's cruel, okay? That's cruel. This is a bad message, but don't be laughing at my hurt, okay? All right? I, got to, I didn't take one class, and I'm on academic probation. But here's what I found out in the business world. People who go to lesser institutions can outperform Ivy Leaguers if you have the power to believe. If you just have the power to believe. I used to live in a wealthy, wealthy neighborhood just because I was doing a youth group. And I used to meet these people who were like millionaires. Some of you thought this. Did you ever meet a millionaire and sit down with them and walk away saying, and hey, they're not so smart. <laughs> and they're not that smart. They were just they, some of them were just dumb enough not to talk themselves out of, out of an idea that I will talk myself out of. Are you all track with me? They just have the power to believe. So belief is this. Belief is this. It's the power to try and to imagine, to try again, to create, to anticipate, to improve, and to hope. Okay? Just think about what you believe. Just we're taking God out of it because this is a bad message today, okay? But just think about your belief system because what you believe in many parts makes it possible. Observation number two. We constantly look for evidence to support what we believe to be true. We're constantly looking for evidence to support what we believe to be true. This is particularly true of Republicans <laughs> and Democrats Whew, a little awkward there for a second, huh? Libertarians, independents, we look. I was raised, I like how I was raised, just by accident. I was raised in Ohio, in the most blue-collar community you could imagine. Every man on my street and the other streets would get up and have these silver, what they called lunch boxes. And they'd all go to work. They all worked in factories and steel mills. I lived my first 18 years Politically speaking, in the most liberal county of Ohio, most liberal one, everyone on my street, everyone in my life was a Democrat. Everyone. My dad would tell me, son, the Democrats saved your life. When I became a Christian, I said, dad, Jesus saved my life. He said, well, then Jesus is a Democrat. I'll go along with that, but then he must be a Democrat. Democrats saved your life, son. And then I went to graduate school in Illinois. I ran a youth group when I was in graduate school at one of the most richest zip codes in the United States of America. Nobody in that community lived in a house less than a million dollars. <laughs> Nobody that I met was a blue-collar guy. They all put on shirts and ties and went downtown Chicago, or they owned their own businesses. None of them were a Democrat. They were all Republicans. They'd have me in their house. I'd eat dinner with their kids and their family. They would all watch the news. 
And I watched him watch the news, and I thought, wow, my dad doesn't watch that channel because those people are deceptive and liars. <laughs> so when I got to know some of those people better, I'd say, hey, how come, how come, how come you don't watch these people? This is, this is who my dad, oh, you can't believe those people. Those people are deceptive and they're liars. And my world, are you, are you tracking with me? Because what we do is we try to look for evidence that supports what we believe to be true. We all do. We all do it. Here's just a side note. I'll just throw in, in this bad message just to make it a little, little good. Okay, here's this. I want you to know this. Here's, a, here's how you have a happy marriage. Couples that believe the best see the best. You with me? Spouse comes home late from work. They say they don't hear from him. Wow, something must have happened. This is unusual, but they're busy. They got a lot of stuff going on. I just believe the best. But if you start, you, you could almost shake up. I, I could almost say some things today. The power of belief. I could almost make you, you could be in a good, I could almost make you, I could say some things today that can make you question what you see and say, well, I don't, I don't believe that's true about him, but, but sometimes he does do that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? What you believe, and, and so it's what you believe is so powerful because what you believe is very, 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 what, what you believe to be true, you'll just see it to be true. Observation number three is this. Belief is easy to maintain within a community of shared belief. So because we believe something, we'll look for ways to support it and then we'll filter out other information. But this world gets a little confusing, huh? That gets a little confusing. So what I'll do is I'll put myself in a community of people who believe the same that I do. So when my belief gets a little shaky, they can support it. Are y'all tracking with me? Every community does this. So this, this is where I'm not trying to bother you. I'm just having you think about what belief is. Every community does this. Every, every religious community does this. They just stay in a community of shared belief. And so, here, and, and so that's what happens. And so we, we, we stay in, my, my dad, my dad didn't run around with Republicans. Those Republicans in Illinois, they didn't run around with too many Democrats. They hung out in their own thing. That's what they watched, that's what they read, and they, because it helped enforce their already developed belief system. Y'all tracking with me? Now I want to move it to religion real quickly. Watch this. Religious belief is simply belief applied to things of a... Religious nature. So we huddle up in our religious groups so that we could be supported for what we believe to be true. Are y'all tracking with me? So here's the deal. I don't want to bother anybody. I just want us to think about this. So you go to a group of Hindus and they will have a meeting of how their God answers prayers and does miracles and they will show you what they believe to be concrete proof. You go to Buddhists, and they will show you how their God answers prayers, does miracles, and does amazing things in their community because you look for what you believe. Are y'all with me? You go, to, you go to Islam, and they will show you things that they believe that Allah answers prayer and does miracles. So religious belief is simply tied into things that we already believe, okay? And so, so we'll put the next one up. Belief deeply enough in any religious system, becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Are y'all with me? You would say, oh, okay. And so that's why people stay in their own communities because they, they, they just think their community's right, your community's wrong, our community's right. And so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Our God does this, yeah, maybe you do, but my God does this. And so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if that's the case, I told you this would be a bad message and it bothers some people, but if that's the case, what, 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 what is religion then? Is it just some Jedi mind trip? You just believe whatever you want and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy? Is that what religion is? And if you're not religious today, I would just encourage you to be religious because studies show this, that religious people are, uh, are, are happier. They have better relationships. They have more calm in their life, less stress. So if, you don't have, if, you don't, if you're here today and you're not religious, just pick one. Just pick one, you'll do better than not, okay? Okay? But, but what does this mean then? What does this mean about belief? If, if that's the truth about belief, it's self-fulfilling prophecy, I look for things to embrace what I already believe. What's my, and here's my conclusion. Here's my conclusion about belief. 
It's from a story. Do you guys know this story? It begins like this. She's just a small town girl. Living in a lonely world. She took the midnight train going anywhere. And while she was doing that, he's just a city boy. She didn't spend all her time in church. Born and raised in South Detroit. Okay. He took a train bound for anywhere. And so Journey's conclusion was, don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling, okay? Okay? And so that's, that, that's, that's, that's just belief. That's just belief today, okay? That's a bad message right there. So I'm going to take the balance of our time that we have, and I'm going to tell you today why I'm a Christian. And I think why you should be a Christian. I'm going to take this time today. I'm going to tell you why I'm a Christian and why I think you should be a Christian. Okay? This is what I believe. Okay? This is what I believe. Just encourage you to follow along with me. Because I think if you follow it logically, I think it may, might, may put your mind at a place where you could put your adult face, maybe, in some new starting blocks. Okay? So here we go. When Jesus died, those closest to him believed that he was what? Dead. Dead. They, 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 they what? They believed that he was dead. Oh, man, Jesus is dead. That's it, he's dead. Well, I, I can't believe it, okay? When those closest to him believed that he was dead, he says, wow, he, he told some nice stories. I saw some miracles, but now he's dead. It's unbelievable that he's dead. They believed that. They believed that he was this powerful speaker whose speaking got him Crowds were swelling up around to watch, to listen to him teach. And they kept getting bigger and bigger. And the officials, especially the Roman people, the Roman Empire, they didn't like it. So Peter, one of his closest followers, says, don't go. Don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go. Don't go to Jerusalem. Because if you go to Jerusalem, they're going to see the power of your, uh, of your ability to articulate. And they're going to kill you. Don't go. And Jesus went. And the crowds in Jerusalem just swelled to hear this guy. Rome and the religious Jews didn't like it. And so they took him and they killed him. They killed him. And here's what they believed. They believed that when he was dead, he was not the Messiah. Are you all with me? He's dead. He's dead. St. John, who followed him and saw those miracles, said, he's dead. He, I can't believe I can't believe that he's dead. He's, he's dead. And they scattered. They ran for their lives. Not one person stood up for Jesus when he died. They all scattered. He's dead. They also believe that he was not the son of God. Are you all with me? He was not. You ask St. Peter, where, where, where's, where's Jesus? He goes, he's dead. In fact, when Jesus died, Peter believed that he was, Jesus was not the son of God. When Jesus died, Peter said... I'm going fishing. I don't believe he meant to say I'm going fishing recreationally. Before he followed Jesus, he was a fisherman. That's how he made his livelihood. He, followed, he left that and says, wow, this guy's got a good gig. I'm with it. I'm with it. And then when Jesus died, the gig was over. Oh, man. Three years of my life wasted. I got a family to support. I got to put a roof over my head. He's not the son of God. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going fishing. They believed that. Their lives were in jeopardy. Are you with me? Every one of them scattered. Every one of them scattered. When Peter was there warming his hands at the fire, when Jesus was a middle school girl went up to him and says, hey, 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 I recognize you're with him. Peter, Matthew says, cussed and swore. Oh, you blankety blank. No, I'm not. Every one of them were cowards. Every one. They all were scattered, running for their lives, knowing that if they found out they were Jesus followers, they'd be dead. Jesus' closest followers lost their faith. Every one of them lost their faith. On Friday night, 
When Jesus was dead, there wasn't a single Christian on planet Earth. On Saturday, when he was in the tomb, there wasn't a single Christian on planet Earth. Dead. The gig is over. Done. Done. Wow. All that time I spent with him. Even Jesus' mom walked away. No. Wow. Can't believe it. And that spelled the end. It's over. It's over. Those who knew him best, it's over. It's done. Now watch this. Stay with me. Friday night, no Christians. All day Saturday, no Christians. Y'all with me? Sunday morning, he raises from the dead. Peter sees him. John sees him. Matthew sees him. Andrew sees him. Thomas sees him. Y'all with me? All these people who were running for their lives, all of a sudden they become not Six years later, not 10 years later, not 20 years later, a week later, the same people who were running for their lives now are bold going through the city of Jerusalem saying, we believe, we believe. What did they believe? They believed that they saw something, that Jesus died and rose again. Now watch this. You got to get this because this is, this is what separates Christianity from every other religion, every other belief system. When a founder of a belief system dies, when a founder of a belief system dies, the people who follow that leader do everything they can immediately to propagate his teachings. When Gandhi died, the people who followed Gandhi said, hurry up, get his teachings together, get his teachings together. We got to continue his teaching. When Muhammad died of old age, his followers got behind us. Hurry up. He, he, he got revelations from the angel Gabriel. Hurry up. Get those together. Hurry up. Let's put a book together. We got to propagate his teachings. When Joseph Smith, founder of the Mormon church, got assassinated in Carthage, Illinois, his followers quickly got together and said, hurry up, hurry up, let's find out what he got. Those golden plates from the angel moron, let's hurry up, let's get those together. Let's hurry up. We got to propagate his teaching. When Jesus died, no one got together to propagate his teaching because his teaching was based not on what he said, but on who he was. You take him out of the equation, game over. Are y'all still tracking with me? Game over. It's the only religion that does that. So when Jesus is in there, nothing. But when he rose from the dead, the same people, the same people who were cowards and ran away said, wow, I don't believe in something. I saw something that changed my life. This man was once dead and now he lives. And so they went through the streets of Jerusalem, not a week later, not Telling Jesus' story. Hey, let me tell you a story about two guys, about a man who had two sons. One took all. You won't find any disciple recorded teaching a story that Jesus told. Hey, let me tell you about the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the come. They didn't, they didn't. Here's what they said. They said, we saw a man, we followed him. He was dead. We saw him put in the grave, and then he's alive again. That's the story we're going to tell because no one can tell that story. So these same cowards who were just cowering for their life, a week later after they saw the resurrected Jesus, went through the streets of Jerusalem, and here's what they preached. Here's their four-point message. We won't get into it, but here it was. You killed them. All, 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 all the whole crowd of Jerusalem is there, and they're pointing out people. Keith, you killed them. You were there, buddy. I saw you. When they says, who should we save? You said, kill Jesus. I saw you. Hey, Ed. Don't think you're all that. You, you were there too. You said save Barabbas. You said kill Jesus. You were there. <laughs> Jim, you were there. You were there, Jim. So they're bold. They're pointing people out in the crowd and said, you killed them. But here's the story. God raised them. God raised them. We've seen it. Now say you're sorry. That's quite a message right there, isn't it? That's, that, 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 that's quite a message. They weren't preaching Jesus' teachings. You won't find that. They were preaching about Jesus. So when Paul, the apostle Paul, who was contemporaries with all these guys, when he goes to the town of Athens, 
This is what he said. We said this a few weeks ago. Here's what he says to the town of Athens. He says this. God, God has given proof of his resurrection. He's given proof of this to, to who? Everyone on planet earth. God has given proof to everyone by raising Jesus from the dead. When Jesus died, no one was around. But when he rose from the dead, all the cowards became bold, not because of what he taught, but because of what he did. Are you all with me? So here's why I'm a Christian. The foundation of my faith, the foundation of my faith is we believe that something happened. Are you all with me? I don't believe I'm a Christian because of the book. Every religion has a book. I believe I'm a Christian because Jesus Christ died and rose again. And those who were closest to him, those who were closest to him, their lives were revolutionized. Next slide says this. We believe that Jesus was crucified for our sin and God raised him from the dead. God raised them. They didn't even have this book. Some of these books were, some of these stories were written in 50, Jesus died in 30 AD. Some of these books were written in 50, 60, 70 AD, but the New Testament wasn't compiled until 250 or 300 AD. Are y'all with me? They didn't have a book, the early church. They didn't have a book, but the church just blossomed and blew up and spread across the world. Why? Not because of a book, but because of an event that really happened and they were there to see it. Oh, you guys are boring to talk to. That's exciting to me. That's just exciting. But this is a bad message. I don't care, so that's all right. Okay? But that, that's just unbelievable. That's just, a, that's just unbelievable. The church, the church was not launched because of a teaching. <laughs> the church was not launched because of a book. The church was launched and it survived into the 21st century because we believe in a person that actually died and rose again from the dead. Yeah, that's, that's, that's patronizing me. That's patronizing me, and I don't like it. So anyway, I'm okay, okay? So that's why, okay? So here's, here's why I'm, I'm coming around the corner now. He, he, here's the question. We started out with this way, but for anybody on this planet who's a thinking person who says, where's the starting point of faith? Here's the question you have to wrestle with. Here's the question is this. Who is Jesus? Pre-cross. Not pre-cross. Pre-resurrection. Here's how they would answer. Who's Jesus? Wow, he was a powerful teacher. He did some miracles that were amazing. He fed a lot of people in the wilderness. He only had a couple of loaves and a few fish. But he said, that's amazing. He could say some things nobody could. Amazing guy. Amazing. Who's Jesus? Wow. Pre-resurrection. They're saying, he, he was a pretty good teacher, powerful teacher, and did some extraordinary things. That answer totally changes when he rose from the dead. Who is he? He's the son of God. He's the Messiah. He's the most high God. He's done something nobody else. He predicted his death. He did die. He rose again. It's unbelievable. A single, single event changed how those closest to him answered that question. Answered that question. Now, here's what I want you to know. Here's what I want you to know. Because of that single event, <laughs> because of that single event of Jesus dying and raising from the dead, because he did that, and I put my belief in him, wow, he did that. Not because of what he said, but because of what he did. Here's some other things that are true. That means every prayer I utter to God, he hears me. Because Jesus said, when now you pray, my heavenly Father hears you. Y'all with me? Because he did that, that means that you have a God who you can call your heavenly Father. I was with a man this week. He told me something. I related to it because this happened to me when I lost everything. He said, you know what I hate? I go, what? He goes, I hate those forms that say, because he's living by himself right now, and he says, I hate those forms that say, in case of an emergency, here's who you contact. I totally knew what he meant, because I used to live that way. I had no one. 
I had no one. There's some people here who might not have anyone. Here's what I want you to know. Because Jesus rose from the dead, you have a heavenly father. You're never alone. Ever alone. He watches over you better than any human father ever could. Because Jesus rose from the dead, and I believe that he did, that means there's a heaven. Because Jesus said there's a heaven. Are you all with me? That means that I not, this life is not all about this stuff. That someday the pain, the tears, the agony, the betrayals, the disappointments of this life are going to be over. And I'm going to be in a place of eternal peace and joy. You know what that means because Jesus rose from the dead? That means you're going to have trouble in your life because Jesus said you're going to have trouble. Don't be shocked. Oh, I got trouble. He predicted it. In this world, you're going to have problems. But then he says, be of good cheer because I have overcome your problems. Though your problems may weigh on you, God's got a power that's bigger than any problem you're facing. And no matter if it's cancer, the death of a spouse, the death of a child, horrific, heinous things that happen, Jesus said, I will be with you always. Even though you walk through a valley of the shadow of death, I will never leave you. I will comfort you and walk with you every step of the world. So in the midst of your problems, Jesus says, if you believe that I rose from the dead, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Now, this is good for a bad message right here. This stuff is good right here. Okay? This is good stuff right here. So here's the question I want to ask you. As an adult, not as a kid, but as an adult, what do you believe? It's the most powerful thing God has given us. It's the most powerful thing. Belief is powerful. Rocks the world. Changes things. Heals. It's unbelievable what belief does. But I want to ask you today, do you believe in something that? Do you believe that what you believe in can sustain you for the rest of your life and beyond? I submit to you this morning, the only sure belief that you could put something in is not a book, is not a teaching, but in a person. And his name is Jesus Christ, who died and rose again, which means that everything he said is true. Is true. So I invite you all to stand. Is it warm in this room or is it just me? Is it just me? Okay. Maybe I need to work out a little more, don't I? Okay. Here's a question I want you to think about. Here's a question. Hold on, Bryce, just one second. Don't take my last question away, all right? Do you find parts of this message that bother you? It's like, what was he saying? Belief and Hindus get prayers answered? And what, what? Do, you, do you find parts that bother you? I, was, I didn't mean to bother you. I just want to talk about belief. But, but I want you to think about those things if you were bothered today and talk about them with someone. Just talk about them. Oh, I, 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 just talk about them. Because I believe if you talk about them, I believe if you wrestle with those things that you question, it may lead you to put your feet in the starting blocks of a new faith in your adult life. And that's my hope for you. The band's going to come now. You can get that out of there, Bryce. That's in the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Band's going to come. They're going to close with a song that talks about what we believe. All based, all based on the event that Jesus rose from the dead. Because he did that, these are things, anchors, anchors we could put in the ground that we could always count on for the rest of our lives. Let's ask God to help us this week. Father, thank you for every person here. And my prayer, as I mentioned in the beginning, is that no matter what a person's going through today, that you would give them the insight, nudge them, maybe there's fear, give them the courage 
to put their belief, their faith. They may not understand it. I don't still put their belief in the fact that Jesus died and rose again. Not in his teaching, not in a book, but in a person that rocked the world and continues to do so 21 centuries later. Give us the courage to do that. Because if we do, if we do, then I'd be so encouraged because that means every person here who I care about deeply can leave here with hope this morning. (laughs) That's what I want. No circumstance, no challenge, no valley, no trial, no betrayal, no bankruptcy, no divorce, no estrangement from kids, no physical challenge, nothing can rob us of something that you hold. Hope and joy. And that's what I want for every person here this morning as they leave. So Father, help us this morning. Put our belief in something that's sustainable and strong. Thank you that we can believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And when we put our belief in that, we will not be disappointed. And for that, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.